right? I recommend this for all dog trainers. Keep a training journal for your dog where, in which you basically write down, I start off my training journals with um, my goals for the dog, period. Like, what do I expect this dog to do when I'm all done? What are the things I want this dog to en engage in for the rest of its life? And, do, and you may not know everything at the, in the beginning, but the, I try to have an idea of where I'm headed. And then I make a list of the behaviors and, and the skills or the tasks that are inherent in that. My dog's gonna be a search and rescue dog or a competition obedience dog or an agility dog. What things and skills is my dog gonna have to have? And then within there, you, before you do have a training session, each day before you're gonna train with your dog, write down what you expect to do in that training session. After you finish the training session, write down what you actually did, right? Because those things are frequently not the same thing. You, it's good to have a plan, but you have to be ready to abandon your plan immediately, and especially with puppies. You say, I'm planning on working on this today. And you bring the puppy in, and the puppy's not into it, and you're like, okay, new plan. We're doing this now, right? And so you're changing your plans all the time. But write down what you expected to do. Write down what you actually did, how long the training session was, what you worked on, your impressions of the dog, et cetera. This will help you, what time of day it was, all those kinds of things. This will help you kind of identify patterns. You're like, you know, every time I try to train my puppy for the third time each day, the puppy's not into it. So three a days, this puppy's not up for it. How about we go to two a days or one a days, right? And you can alter that, right? Or first thing in the morning, my puppy's on fire, totally ripping my fingers off for food. But when I try, uh, uh, when I come home from work and try a session, the puppy's not, not so into it. So maybe make it, take advantage of the morning training sessions or whatever. And a lot of those things are difficult to remember if you're not keeping track of them. Like good trainers learn to sort of keep these things in their head. Over time you have experience and you keep track of those things, you're paying attention to those details. But in the beginning there's a lot of stuff happening and you forget. You're like, I don't know how the puppy was last week. How many times did I train last week? I don't remember how many times I trained last week. So this could be a really useful tool in kind of identifying whether or not you're overdoing it with your puppy. Because it's easy to overtrain with a puppy, right? You want to progress your puppy and practice is useful, but it's uh, also possible that you can do too much, which will flatten the puppy out and make them put less energy into to what they're doing. So keep track of that stuff as well. But also, I keep in my training journal my socialization trips and things like that. And so if I notice my puppy doesn't like the sound of motorcycles going by, note to self. This is something I'm gonna to wanna to pay attention to and work on. There may be a slight sound sensitivity there or whatever it is. And all these things are information that's gonna help me go forward. And so that first couple of weeks at home are the basic management stuff of crate training and the beginnings of housebreaking and getting to know the puppy, starting the very infancy of training. And in the, after a couple of weeks, I'm gonna start charging my marks and begin my luring and all that kind of stuff as we go along, potentially introduce the dog to my other dogs, depending on what you've got if you have other dogs, the other members of the household and those sorts of things, and start to socialize and develop a training plan. And then we'll start to basically get into the stuff that we covered over the course of the week. <laughs>